Hi, it's Jack. Today I'm going to talk about coyotes and their relationship to cats in suburbia. First, I want to say that, you know, you should never harm a coyote, and really, coyotes are actually a cat's friend. And I'm going to explain why. There's two categories of coyote. There's the suburban coyote and there's the natural habitat coyote. They're both the same species, but they're just entirely different how, how they affect cats and, uh, or how they actually, how they, you know, approach their own survival. That's, that, that is what's different. And mainly I'm concerned with the suburban coyote, uh, but, uh, I also have to deal with the natural habitat coyotes because sometimes, you know, often, you know, new tracts of homes are built right up against the wilderness, and that that causes the natural habitat coyote to come in there sometimes. So, so I'll talk about that in a minute. For now, I'm going to talk about the uh, suburban coyote. So, <clears throat> suburban coyotes basically exist by scavenging, and you know they'll get trash, they'll get pet food that's left out, and full-grown and able-bodied cats are safe from suburban coyotes. Now, if if a suburban or any coyote runs across a kitten, you know, it's just going to be straight down the hatch. There's no. And no small dog such as Yorkie is safe from any coyote. If the coyote can just by itself just grab a dog and run off with it, then it is not safe. But full-grown and able-bodied cats are safe. And so probably you're wondering, you know, what are these cats that are being, you know, you, you know that they're, they were full grown and they were killed by coyotes. Okay, I'm going to explain what's happening there. First, you need to understand something about cats. Uh, they, they live 12 to 14 years, something like that. Some them live a lot longer. Oftentimes, maybe, I'm not sure if it's even most of the time, uh, uh, you know, when you really think it through, but oftentimes, at least, they actually, if they live their lives all the way through where they run the clock out, it's their kidneys that give out. And they go through what's called chronic renal failure. Now, the symptoms of this, like maybe as, 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 you know, maybe a couple years before it actually kicks in, you might see them start to urinate a lot more, and uh, when it really gets going, they go into this dead sleep, you know, really a dead sleep, not 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 a cat nap with their ears moving around while they're sleeping, you know, while they're napping and they hear what's going on, uh, they go into a dead sleep, you can just walk right up to them and just, they don't even hear you, and uh, sometimes they get real skinny, you see them get real skinny. That's really bad when that happens. Probably if you took a full body x-ray right then, you could even see that their kidneys have atrophied at that point. The thing is, the coyotes can smell this. And when they do smell, so they, if a cat is suffering from this outside, you know, they go and they cross that trail of the cat, they know the cat, that there's a cat around this, that this is happening too. And this whole process when it gets really bad can take six months that's a you know really a long time i'm not sure exactly how long it takes it seems like it's about six months and um he, the, the the suburban coyotes are they're out there they're gritting around they know the cats in their area they actually know all the cats and the cats know them and they don't do anything to them they just don't if they see a cat out in the open they'll like rush it to see if it's injured or something but they don't want anything to do with an, a, a full-grown and able-bodied cat but a cat going through chronic renal failure is not an able-bodied cat at all that's a half-dead cat that's suffering quite a lot and, and we know they're suffering because Humans who are going through this explain how terrible that is. So, so that's those are the cats they're getting right there. Cats that really aren't. They don't have uh, any quality, you know, of life left. And if you, uh, if you, if that is your cat, then you will want to. You know, as an outdoor cat, you will want to bring that cat, your cat, in if that's happening. Otherwise, 
I mean, a coyote would rather that the cat went all the way to death, and they, they just want the body, that's all. But other coyotes will smell this, and it becomes a race, and so it's kind of like they have to get there first, and so that's what's happening. And this is their overall strategy, too, or this is an affirmative... Uh, well, it's it's an affirmative strategy. It's something that that they actually. This is just what they practice. This is what they're looking for with cats. That's as they think about cats. They're looking for that chronic renal failure. So they're grinning up and down. They know the cats, and they can see the cats aren't injured. They can see that they aren't suffering from this. They leave them alone. But they know one day, you know, uh, that you know that. This, you know, any cat they see might get this, and then they're going to kill that cat. That's what's going to happen. So that's not quite the same thing as hunting cats. That is kind of borderline scavenging. And so you can protect against this if you have an outdoor cat, and your outdoor cat's going through this. You'll have to make the decision. And so that's basically what's taking place there. Otherwise, they aren't... I mean, full-grown able-bodied cats are, are safe. And... Um, so... On the natural habitat coyotes, they're actually good for cats, too. And it's others have, have explained this before. The natural habitat coyotes keep cats out of the wilderness, out of the areas where the birds are nesting, and that is that is very important for the survival of cats because, you know, there are people that care about the birds, and, you know, I care about the birds, so do you, and, uh, you know, and, and we can't have the cats going out there and killing all the birds. The coyotes make sure that doesn't happen. So the cats immediately completely stay away because the coyotes are out there, so... so that means don't harm, you know, any coyote, really. There's, I mean, if a coyote bites down on your cat, if something like that happens, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I say you're clear to go ahead and harm that coyote to save your cat. But be proactive. If your cat is suffering from chronic renal failure, bring your cat in. Or, you know, deal, deal with the issue. I don't really think there's a lot that can be done to help them, you know, I mean, maybe there's probably stuff that can be done to help them. I don't think you're going to save them unless you're willing to do a, a, a you know, dialysis or a, a kidney transplant, which they can do for cats, actually. They can do that. It's expensive. And you have to adopt a donor cat. <laughs> there's one place they will do that. I forget, I think it's the University of Pennsylvania or something. So, um, so yeah. And, um, in, in, with regard to the, uh, suburban coyotes going and, you know, they're gritting up and down and they're looking for, uh, uh, you know, a cat that's going through chronic renal failure, you know, it, it lasts about six months or, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know exactly, but it's something like six months. And so you can see a cat's life is only 12 to 14 years. So that's a big percentage of time that the cat is going through this. That means that if the area is big enough, there's, you know, always either a cat going through this or a cat about to start going through it, you know. So that means, I mean, cause, you know, if it's lasting that long, six months, and uh, so you can see that means a lot, you know, the, you know, not a tremendous number of cats, but but a very noticeable number of cats will be killed. And you know, there's two times of year you have to be very worried. That's June, because that's puppy season right there. And so, if it's even close, I mean, they are so desperate for food. They need all that extra food to feed the puppies. So, and they have to keep themselves fed. They're burning more energy, too, to take care of the puppies, and they just need a bunch of extra food in June. So, if it's even close, that's when there's going to be more, you know, attacks. And also, you'll end up with uh, natural habitat coyotes coming in then. So, and they don't, they don't need chronic renal failure, they don't think like that.
They don't need a chronic renal failure or look for that. Or they just see any cat that's out in the open. They can go underneath the cars or anything. And, um, you know, these, these coyotes are very small, very small. When you get up close to them, they look bigger when you're further away because they've got narrow hips and long legs. But when you get up really close, you see how small they really are. And that's what makes them so, uh, you know, able to survive in suburbia. And so, I mean, um, they're not super predators. Sometimes they are called super predators. They're not super predators except for the natural habitat coyotes when they're in packs. They are, that's a super predator situation there. Cats, <coughs> cats are super predators though. And the uh, other time of year that you, have, that you have to worry about is, is at the end of October, around Halloween. And, uh, that's when those puppies in the natural habitat get kicked out of the natural habitat. And, um, <clears throat> it's during this time, this is a time when <clears throat> a full-grown and able-bodied cat can be killed by the puppies because they don't know any better. And I believe that this is how a lot of those puppies meet their end right there. Unfortunately, this is when, you know, a few cats are going to, a few outdoor cats are going to be killed. Um, but even those coyotes shouldn't be harmed because they learned a very valuable lesson right there. Those that do survive this, they know never to try that again. Okay, so, so really, uh, unless that coyote has bit down on your cat, there's never a time to harm a coyote. Okay, so here's a, a recent case here. This is Peanut. Um, it's about P-N-U-T. He was, uh, he's a cat in my, uh, preserve, which is two square miles of, uh, uh, suburbia where I keep track of what happens with the cats. And, um, Peanut has recently been killed by a coyote. And I'm going to show you, uh, he, he actually disappeared on June 12th, 2014. And he was found dismembered in uh you know in a nearby park common place to find uh to find that uh for the coyotes in there that's where they go and uh but you can see in this video he is an attack cat he is not afraid of dogs you know he's attacked my dogs Daphne and, and Buffy before and he's known to attack pit bulls, or they're by themselves, I mean, if this guy with a pit bull, right, he just jumps right on the pit bull's head, he doesn't care, so, and there's coyotes going right through where he's at all the time, so you know he's not afraid of any coyote, he just jumps right on them if he can catch them, so, um, and you can see he's like, yeah, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of a small cat, he's got like this cherub face, you know, kind of small jaws and everything, but he ran the clock out. He never had any, you know, coyote attack him until one day. And so, uh, I checked in, I talked to the owner, I talked to the neighbors and everything, and, and it was just overwhelming. Chronic renal failure. And I even had one neighbor, uh, uh, tell me just of his own, you know, just, just by, with no prompting from me, telling me that he noticed that he could walk right up to Peanut, you know, without Peanut hearing him or anything, and Peanut was just sitting there, you know, dead asleep. And so, you know, that, that just shows you, uh, you know, everything that I'm talking about here. He, he there's no, you know, he, he uh, a coyote could easily, doesn't have to hunt him, a coyote could easily just stand there and, and Peanut's just gonna rush him. So, you know, I mean, so why, why doesn't the coyote, you know, if they're hunting cats, that's how, a very easy thing to do. And there's a lot of cats out there like this, and they don't run into any trouble until that very time that they get the CRF. So, yeah, that's a good example of that. And uh, this video was taken uh, August 29th, so almost a year before he, he was actually, uh, um, he actually disappeared. And really, his cause of death should be considered uh, a chronic renal failure. It shouldn't be coyote attack. Because really, I mean, the coyote is just scavenging. You know, I mean, if 
you think about it, it really should be chronic renal failure. And with regard to them gritting um, and looking for cats suffering uh, chronic renal failure, this is uh, this has evolved, I believe, to be a, an affirmative strategy. It's not like they're just, you know, they happen upon a cat that's suffering this. This is their whole intent with regard to cats. That's what they're looking for. And so they look upon the cats as, as possibly... Uh, creatures to take care of because they want them to make it, you know, to, to chronic renal failure and so they can't be harvested. It's possibly that advanced. And, uh, I'm trying to ascertain if indeed that is the case, you know, w- with, you know, ethical experiments out there. And, uh, I'll have a better idea of that uh, pretty soon, but, uh, what I'm going to test for is if, or what I'm looking for is if I can show that the coyotes are actually protecting the cats. And if I can show that, that will be, you know, evidence to support that it's actually an affirmative strategy, or actually, it's actually, um, they're harvesting, they're harvesting de facto. That's what they're doing. Okay. That, that, that's for sure, just as I've explained it. But is it, you know, de jour? Is that just how they think about this? Just, just flat out, you know. I mean, that's how they they view the cats to be harvested. If that's the case, then then the next step is to protect the cats, and so that's what I want to see if that's happened. So don't harm a coyote. There's no need to harm a coyote. Leave them alone. They're actually very good for cats, and they have relationships with the cats. I mean, the cats know them and everything. They don't go anywhere near them. They're incredibly small. Uh, uh, they could well be killed if they were to attack a tomcat or something like that. They could well be killed. I mean, it's just, as far as these small little female coyotes, they'd never attack a tomcat. They'd be killed for sure. So, so, um, so that's what's happening out there. And, uh, thank you for listening.